Okay, second requested uh, lecture um, from the request list and is on more calorimetry practice problems, uh, basic setups, and of course variables that are not heat. Okay, so this is for those who ask that. Okay, so um, if you're looking to work along with me, I have this um, worksheet uh, uploaded behind or after this video. Okay, for your view pleasures. So here we go. So looking for the specific heat of aluminum, the temperature of a 28.4 gram sample of aluminum is increased by that temperature when that many joules of heat is added. So I always begin with my thermal uh, equation Q is equal to MC change in T. A couple of hints here, they gave me 207 joules. So I know my specific heat will be answered in joules, but if you notice, that's what they're asking for in this problem. So for those that are having some trouble, just plug in what you have. Uh, you have the grams, so 28.4 grams, and you have your temperature. It's increased by, that's not initial or final, if your temperature is increasing by that amount, that is actually your temperature change, okay? And of course, we're left with our C for our unknown. Now this causes some people some problems. So what we're going to do here is um, uh, solve for the unknown by rearranging the problem. So what I do and like to do is I like to um, rearrange my problem. So if I'm solving for C, what I'm going to do is multiply and just get rid of uh, both sides here. Get this arrow. What um, I'm going to times this side by 1 over M change in T, and I times this side by 1 over M change in T, and what this is going to give me is that these values will cancel, and what I'm left with is an equation that gives me C is equal to Q over M change of T. So that's my new equation. All right. So I'm going to get rid of all of this again to make it clear. Okay, so again, my new equation solving for Q, this is just basic algebra, is that C is equal to my Q over mass times change in temperature. If you notice, that's the units for specific heat. The amount of energy it takes to raise one gram of substance, a change in temperature, some degree. Okay. So let's go plug that in. Let's go move this here. Uh, we're solving for C. So making this nice and clear. So if I come over here, what's my Q? Well, my Q is they gave me the heat to be 207. That's my joules. The mass they gave me was 28.4 grams. And my degree change in Celsius is 8.1 degrees Celsius that is equal to my C. Do you see it? Yeah. Okay, so put that in our calculator and let's do that. I'll do that right with you. Um, 207 divide by, now be very, very careful here. Okay, you cannot divide by 28 then multiply by 8.1. This, okay, these two numbers have to be multiplied by, but put them in parentheses because your calculator will do the order of operations differently than you're thinking in your head. Okay, so 28.4 times 8.1, uh, close my parentheses, and I get my C to be, or my specific heat to be 0.89984, and of course that's joules per gram per degree Celsius, the kind of unit we're using. Now, of course, our units need to be canceled Okay, so we have two sig figs, three sig figs, three sig figs. We're going to go point, well, now this is eight, nine, and I need two sig figs, so this one's greater, so point nine zero. Okay, joules per gram per degree Celsius. So again, our answer is point nine zero joules per gram per degree Celsius. Okay, two sig figs, ending zero counts, but decimal point is present. 
So what I'd like you to do now is I would like you to try number two. Okay, and I'll get right back to you. So pause this now, and when you're ready, okay, see if you get the same answer I get. So I'm just kind of talking and filling up some space here. Pause this now. Okay, I'm back, and I'm back with the uh, the uh, solution here to the same problem, same kind of problem, solving for C, a variable unlike Q, and I'm rearranging the problem, dividing both sides by mass over change in temperature, and a quick algebraic uh, way to do that is to take your things on top, go to the bottom, okay, and that's, you'll find that as we manipulate equations, and so I set up my C equals Q over M, change of T, and then, of course, I plug in my values over here. There's my, there's my joules, and there's my mass, and there's my degrees Celsius. Um, I make sure I put a parenthesis here in my calculator, and I get 0.7107. And I get my, there's my joules per gram per degree Celsius. And I round to two sig figs because the least significant number is 3.8. So I hope that helped there. Let's go on to a different problem. Uh, how about we go back to where we were, not this one. Uh, let's minus this one. Okay, sorry about that. All right, so number three. Okay, now they want the mass. Okay, so same idea. Q equals m c change in t. It's my thermal equation. All right, and what are they going to give me here? Well. Let's think. They're giving me uh, initial temperature. They're giving me a final temperature. So that way I can solve for change in temperature, no problem. Uh, let's see here. Carefully, they're giving me initial temperature of the water. It was mixed with a mass of iron. Ooh, okay, this is a little more, tif more difficult. Initially at 500, when the thermal equal is reached, has a mass of 42. So this is the final temperature for both find the mass of the iron. Okay, so let's do this one. And um, when I originally did this, I thought it was much easier, but not gonna be, this is not too big, too bad of a deal. We need a thermal diagram here. Okay, so let's measure out what we have here. We have a container. We have some water. Okay, we have some black water. And we're going to have our block. Okay, unknown mass of block. It's an unknown grams and it's at 500 degrees Celsius okay and the water initially is at 20 degrees Celsius so clearly my friends we are going to have a transfer of heat from the warm block to the water we can only assume there's no cup or anything else involved because they don't say so so my thermal equation is Q of the water has to equal Q of my block. Nothing else is involved. Energy absorbed equals energy released. So we have the mass of my water as 240 grams and we're going to use specific heat of the water to be 4.18 joules per gram per degree Celsius and we know that the water, I'm going to draw this over here, is going to go up in temperature. So the water, the H2O, started lower. The block was much higher in temperature. So the water is going to go up in heat. The block is going to go down in heat. So the temperature final is in the middle. So that means water's temperature initial is lower than its temperature final. So I'm going to go TF minus TI. Okay, so the temperature final is what we're trying to solve for minus the initial. The initial temperature is 20. And that's how I solve this. Again, I'm keeping these things positive. Okay, Q of the block. What's the mass of the block? Okay, well, we don't know that. Okay. And, well, we do know temperature final. I'm sorry. Bad Grodsky. Okay, we do know. We do know that the temperature is 42. Okay. So the water is going to go from 20 minus 42, or in this case, 42 minus 20. Okay. And now I have the mass of my block. And I'm going to need a specific heat. So let me pause and get that for you. 
Okay, so the, the specific heat of, of, of iron is 0 0.450 joules per gram per degree Celsius. Okay, and our change in temperature, all right, well, that's going to be our 500. All right, that's going to be our 500 minus the 20. And if you notice, I have all variables except for one, mass. So uh, let's simplify this. And what we have is uh, clear 240 times 4.18, okay, times what 42 minus 20 is. And I get a value that looks like this, 22070.4, okay. And let's go find these numbers here. This is going to be this times this times m. And we'll have some number m, and then we'll divide by that that by to get that m out of the way algebraically. So let's go find that, 0 0.450 times parentheses, 500 minus 20. I guess I could have done that in my head, 480, but hey, good practice, I guess. So I get 216 M. All right, and let's change colors because I'm a colorful guy. And let's go rearrange this equation to solve for it. So we get 22070.4, or fo, and we divide by 216 and that's going to be my mass. So here we go. 2270.4 divide by 216. And I get my mass to be equal to 102.177. And that would have to be grams because we noticed everything kind of cancels out here. This is degrees Celsius, this side is joules, and we're going to have degrees Celsius. This is a degree Celsius, and notice these joules would cancel with these joules. Uh, this degree Celsius change can cancels out here, and you're left with grams. Okay, <laughs> so that's why that comes out. Now we have, oh, well, this is a weird question. We have uh, one sig fig here, it looks like. So, silly kind of question, so we have to round this to hundred grams with one sig fig okay now this is a nice little problem because it made me think about using thermal diagrams but in essence I really didn't need this I thought there was more to this here but obviously they gave you the change in temperature they gave you the mass the specific heat would be normally given to you so you're solving for the one unknown okay if you had this energy here Okay, and that's essentially what you really have. In a regular, very simple regions level question, they would say, hey, if there was 2207 uh, joules of energy that was uh, exchanged, in energy, uh, exchanged in the calorimeter, okay, what was the mass of the block? And you would have all these other values and just solve for M. Now, how would you solve for M? Well, if this is uh, specific heat and this is change in temperature, you should be able to figure out by moving these guys to below it would be joules over C change in temperature. And that's what you're solving for. Now, specific heat, let's look at this carefully. Joules, specific heat is in joules per gram per degree Celsius times degree Celsius. And you can see that the degree Celsius would cancel, the joules would cancel, and you'd be left with one over, one over grams, which is the same thing as grams. So that's how that came out that way. So in a regions question, maybe they wouldn't go to this great lengths with this part right here to make you think. They'd give you this value, and they'd give you the specific heat, which we just did here, and the change in temperature we just did here. And they ex expect you to solve for the mass. So for those that are having problems with the, the other variables, they just solve for that, okay? So, what I'd like you to do now is try the next one. Now, whether you want to take that Q that I just did and make it into a number and then make it equal to the M here, be my host. So try number four. 
um, you're going to need the specific heat of aluminum. Uh, let me. Okay, so aluminum's specific heat is 0 0.910 joules per gram per degree Celsius. Okay, now try this problem. Okay, I'm going to pause the video and go back and try this and see what you get. Okay, so we're going to pause right now. When you put this back on from this position, I'm going to put in the results. You should have paused. If you haven't paused, just wait. If you have paused, keep waiting. I will appear with the solutions shortly. Okay, I'm back, and what I got here is my thermal uh, diagram, 400 degrees uh, aluminum block, 25 degrees water, nothing else is mentioned, so the block energy equals the energy of the water. I flipped it around this time because in this time, okay, I notice that I have all the energy parts of all the parts of my thermal diagram for the block right here. So I found the total energy for my block. And this is kind of like a Regents question. Let's say, hey, the total energy released by the block was 39,312 joules. What's the mass of the water that accepted that energy if its final or its change in temperature was 55? So you plug this in. Notice what I did here is I rearranged my M just like you did for the C in, in questions um, uh, 1 and 2. And this time I have Joule over the specific heat over 55. All I did was put the these components here on the bottom. Okay, and I solve for that. Notice Joules cancels, degrees Celsius can cancels, and I have 1 over 1 over grams, which is the same thing as grams. And I put it in my calculator. Don't forget to put parentheses with these two values and I get a mass of 170. I round to one sig fig because this silly question has one sig figs uh, kind of numbers here. Okay, and that my best you know, my, my answer is about 200 grams. Okay, so hope you see that. Okay, and this is a, the watered down version would be given the heat here. The honors version would be giving these quantities here. Okay, so I hope that kind of helped in in doing variables other than just heat. You had specific heat. Okay. Um, the other the other two, which I'm going to leave alone, are number five and number six. And if you read these questions here, you're looking for the, the final temperature of the system, and that's something we've already have done. Um, I'll, uh, I'll just lay this one out for you because it looks very simple. Okay, uh, This one says I have 59 grams of water at 13 degrees Celsius. It's mixed with water at 72. Find the final temperature of the water. Well, you're pouring warm water into, uh, you're pouring what? cold water into some hot water. So Q of the, let's say, the hot H2O has to be equal to the Q of the cold L in there, H2O. Okay, so uh, you're going to have MC change in T for both. You have 59 grams here, uh, and you have the specific heat is 4.18 joules per gram per degree Celsius. And we have a temperature change. Now, the uh, hot water is at 72. And this is where you definitely need this. So you have the 72 degrees hot water. And you've got the 13 degrees cold water. Obviously, the cold water is going to come up. The hot water is going to come down. Your temperature final is in the middle somewhere. And, of course, these are the temperature initials. And I like to do this because it helps us keep these positive values. So if you look for the hot water, it's going to come down, which means final temperature is going to be lower. So we're going to go 72 minus T final. Keep that positive. For the opposite reasons, we're going to take what? We're going to take our, uh, and this is, I, I got this wrong. This is 59. This should be the cold water is what? Okay, this is the hot water. So the hot water is going to be 87. Okay, so I can do this. 87 grams, and it's going from 72. And then the cold water is going to be 59 grams. Of course, 4.18. Okay, joules per gram per degree Celsius. And the, here, the, uh, the cold water is starting low and going high, so temperature final is going to be bigger, so that's why I put that in front. This diagram really is helpful. Minus, of course, um, its initial, its initial temperature is 13. 
and now you're going to solve for TF like you did, okay? And that's you know something you can do now. What you uh, and that's that's what we're going to do like we did in the other homework problems. I'm not going to walk you through that. I'm just setting this up. And number six is just like another homework problem that we've been working on. Okay, hope this helped.